55 women and William in the kitchen. Edgar was in the driveway. Franklin was in the bathroom. James was out in the backyard. During the blackout, someone removed the pie from the cupboard, and then it vanished. When the lights came back on, we discovered some nursery rhymes and a trail of pie crumbs leading to the bathroom. No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. I went to the breaker box, you see. Um, so the power turned off, and Franklin was in the bathroom. You are correct on the first date, but misinformed on the last. See, Franklin had exited the bathroom. For more about him later. The pie crumbs were a futile attempts to frame Clary in order to divert attention from the real intended culprit, William Hubbard. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. Clara stated that she was halfway through ten little Indians. Indeed, her book was so marked by the folding of the page in the upper right-hand corner of her halfway through the book, with the pie crumbs were on page 26, which was marked with the lower right-hand corner fold, just the way I found a page fold in Sports Illustrated. <laughs> yes, yes. Remember, the pie was locked in the cupboard, and my wife was the only one with the key. The only key? Claire's key fell to the floor the first time she put it in her pocket because there was a hole in her pocket, probably cut by William in order to obtain the key and make a duplicate. Empty your pockets, William, or do I have to get my medicine? Yeah. Give me a moment. Did I say that you did it? 
I said that the thief was wearing her missing ink and gloves. And the thief, oh, the thief is Edgar J. Witherby. It seems we've all heard enough of this idiotic twaddle. I'm going to wish all the part. Where are you going so fast, Bub? You don't want to miss the end of this, do ya? <laughs> back to your seats. That's all real. Back to our seats. We need to figure this out. Who want to go on? Well, it was a nursery rhyme that got me thinking. First was a warning. Three little kittens lost their mittens, and thus were deprived of high. Then Uda lost her mittens. The second told us that the cupboard was there and that the crime had occurred. The third pointed to the <coughs> You see, neither Edgar or Simple Simon ever cared pennies. You're a man obsessed, Edgar, obsessed with nursery rhymes, and you just couldn't be your coon about getting someone to solve a mystery while you met your match now. <laughs> All of this proves nothing. And then there was the Oreo affair. Still no proof. You don't want to impress me, you pair of shkitkowitz. <laughs> you retreated to the backyard, fainting eyes be up, but instead went to shut off the main power and went to the open kitchen window. Yes, open, for either William or Clara opened it shortly before we arrived because they had burned some rolls. I, I smell them like it. <laughs> you intended to climb through the window. You open the cupboard and take the pie. Obviously, you forgot Clara had booby trapped the hinges. But William made your job easy. He opened the cupboard with the duplicate key, set it by the window, grabbed a handful of pie crusts for his friend Uncle Clara. He planned to return to it to make off the pie, but you grabbed it first. So how did I get a hold of Uda's evening gloves? Remember, they were missing. That is the oldest trick in the book. Uda sent you for them. You stuffed them in your pocket to keep your pie plates off the pie plates. But then, you simply stated that they were missing. Proof, proof, I want to see proof. And, and my lawyer. Now, for the proof. You handed them to James to return to your jacket pocket, but he came in through the front door in response to his wife's scream. And that is where you wonder. See, you handed put the gloves in the left-hand pocket at the beginning of the evening. James returned them to the right-hand pocket. See, of all of those now present in the original self deduction, only James was ever going to be Cobra. There's something else that led me to suspect him. This curious misquotation of Matthew 6.1, something a deacon would have never do. <laughs> Jesus did not say, you were practicing your deeds before men. Rather, you were practicing your righteousness before men. Deeds is a neutral term equally applicable to either good or evil. His verbal adjustment was in Freudian terminology, a blatant example of reverse conscious advanced reaction mechanism formation syndrome. <laughs> you blithering idiot, I told you to put them in the right pocket. I did put them in the right pocket. Well, the right pocket was the left pocket. <laughs> How can the left be right? Right and left. The left isn't the right unless the right is the left. No, 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 that's wrong. <laughs> the, the right is wrong and the left is the right. Yeah. Let's on the IQ of over 200 to clear this up. <laughs> the right pocket is in the wrong pocket as long as the left pocket is in the right pocket. Plus the right pocket is in the wrong pocket and the left pocket is not the right pocket. The right pocket's obviously the left pocket. <laughs> In any event, you have your thieves now deal with them. Oh, Lana, what will ever become of us? I hope you get six months of Pine Woods Punitive Pilot Pies Hiding Program. <laughs> no! I think your pain is too great to endure. Of that before you try to match with the one pair of Luana, I am in awe. How did you do it? It is simply that all of you only see. I observe. Come, dearest friends, and Gretchen. Let us take our leave of friends and of these clumsy collaborators in a hurry to still spit a box of cream before an uncle and you close. Hey.
rest of you out of my house. <laughs>